In this video, I'm going to teach you my two favorite binds. The first one looks like this. Uh, there's also a variation on that I'm going to show you where it goes to the outside of your hand like that. And the second one looks like this. Now, these are not the easiest binds in the world, but with just a couple of tips, and uh, it'll take a little bit of practice, you'll get there in no time. One thing I would recommend when learning these binds is that you don't throw the yo-yo particularly hard as you attempt them. That'll allow you to practice these tricks slower and still have them work, and it makes it a little bit less scary so that you can make progress quicker. So the first thing that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to throw a breakaway and then perform an undermount. And so if you don't already know how to do that, definitely check out our video on binds where we explain how to do that. But once you're set up with that, you're pretty much ready to go. Once you have your undermount, the first thing that you want to do when you're performing this first bind, because obviously it's going to go up into the air, is you need to figure out how to roll the yo-yo up into the air. So probably the biggest problem that I see people make when they're doing this is they don't get quite enough height on the yo-yo, and if you don't get enough height, then that can end up with a tail in the yo-yo. If, uh, if you even get the bind, a lot of times the yo-yo won't even bind at all. And one of the things I love about this bind is when you do it right, it's very easy to get it consistently clean, which is what you always want from your bind. So let's first talk about the roll. Now, if you have performed a brain twister or other types of flip tricks, then what you know is that one hand orbits around the other hand like this. What you want to do with this is what's called a roll. And in a roll, one hand does not orbit around the yo-yo. The yo-yo kind of spins in between your hands. So what you want to do with this one is you want to position your opposite hand so that your finger points kind of perpendicular to yourself. And then position your yo-yo hand so that your fingers are pointed straight and forward. And you want to make sure that this hand is perfectly level because when the yo-yo starts to orbit, it's if it's even a little bit tilted any way, the yo-yo is going to fall right off of that finger. As long as it is perfectly straight, then you're not going to have that problem. And so if you can kind of get that rolling motion down, then that is, uh, you're almost halfway there to being able to perform the bind. Because what you want to do is you want to release it so that the yo-yo is going to go pretty much straight into the air. And that rolling motion, if you have never done that before, it's going to feel really awkward. But it won't take too long to get as long as you're just determined to uh, do what I said. Keep this hand forward and keep this finger perpendicular and perfectly level. And then you keep your hands pretty close. And as long as they're not too close, then the string won't wrap around your finger like this. Uh, if it's just a little bit further away, then the string won't do that. And you'll be able to continue the motion. Now, once you get this rolling motion going, all you're going to do is you're going to angle your opposite hand finger upward when the yo-yo gets more toward you, and that's going to launch the yo-yo up into the air. And the cool thing about this is that you can actually use the flow of getting into the undermount and just roll the yo-yo right up. So you can see this. If I go into the undermount, the yo-yo is already kind of moving in a rolling motion. And so you can just kind of roll the yo-yo up in the air like that once you get better at the trick. But I think at the beginning, you probably just want to roll it one, two, and then try throwing it up into the air. Now one thing that you don't want to happen is you don't want there to be slack in the string while you're performing your bind. And so as soon as you release the yo-yo up into the air, you want to pull down with your yo-yo hand. Now when you pull down, that's actually going to activate the bind a little bit more, so that'll increase your chances of the yo-yo binding, and it will also keep slack from forming, which will decrease the chances that you get a tail when you perform the bind. Now the other thing that you really, really want to keep in mind is that you definitely want your yo-yo hand to be perfectly straight in line with the groove of the yo-yo. So there's a tendency when you're doing this rolling motion, since your yo-yo hand is kind of off-center from the yo-yo a little bit, if you keep it off-center when the yo-yo goes up in the air, see how it doesn't bind? So what you want to do is you want to immediately bring your hand more towards center and then pull down, and that will help get the, the bind to activate in just the right way. Now, the other thing that I want you to pay attention to with this one is the position where my opposite hand ends up. You're going to see that it's also going to go up a little bit. See how that hand is right up here, right up by my face. If I were to turn, you can see that it's, it's a little bit more forward. And so you can kind of see I'm moving this hand up in a way, and then I pull this hand down, and that's what helps to activate the bind. Now, if you want to do the same bind, but you want to toss the yo-yo to the outside of your wrist, so so far we've been doing the rolling and up in between our wrists, 
You can do the same one to the outside, and there's really nothing different except instead of rolling to the inside, you're going to do one roll to the outside of your wrist just like that. And there really isn't anything that's all that different in this bind. The main change, as you've probably noticed, is instead of keeping your hand on this side of the yo-yo, you're going to bend your arm in, and then you can perform the bind just like normal. The movement of the yo-yo, everything is the same. You're just going to kind of push the yo-yo a little bit more to that side and move your hand in just a little bit. Now with both of these binds, it's going to take you a little bit of time to figure out the perfect balance to make sure it's always clean, and then when you change yo-yos and change setups, it might take a little bit of time to tweak it for each setup. So if your string is a little bit thicker or a little bit newer, it's going to bind sooner than you think, so you need to make a little adjustment. Uh, if the gap on your yo-yo is a little wider than a different yo-yo that you have, uh, there's just all these things that can kind of get in the way. And so there's a few adjustments that you can make every time you do it until you can dial it in perfectly for that yo-yo. So the first adjustment you can make is on the speed at, as far as how fast the yo-yo is moving when you toss it up into the air. If your yo-yo is binding just a little bit too soon, you can try doing it a little bit faster and that might uh, affect it the way that you want. Um, you could also try doing it a little bit slower. Uh, sometimes just different changes, they do unexpected things. The other thing that you can do is how much you're pulling down with your yo-yo hand. Uh, you might be pulling down a little bit too much, and if you pull down too much too fast, that might keep it from binding, or it might make it bind too early, so you can always adjust the timing and the distance that you're performing on that, um, how high and where you're positioning your opposite hand is going to kind of determine where the string is released and the motion of the yo-yo. So just kind of pay attention to those three things, the speed, uh, how quickly and how far you're pulling your hand down, and then where you position your opposite hand. And as you make those adjustments, eventually you'll be able to find that perfect, perfect balance so that you can hit a clean bind every single time. Now the other bind is a little bit more tricky, and this one uh, you really, really have to dial it in for every yo-yo that you get. But it is probably my favorite bind because it's so unexpected. The yo-yo moves away from you and then all of a sudden it comes back, and I just think it looks really good. So the way that you do this is it actually starts off in exactly the same way. You're going to roll the yo-yo just like you were for the previous bind, but this time what you want to do is you want to position your yo-yo hand behind the string so that the yo-yo falls over it just like this, okay? And then what you're doing is as the yo-yo continues to roll, instead of going straight up, like I said, you're going to interfere with the string and then toss the yo-yo forward. Now when you're setting up your yo-yo hand behind the string like I showed you, uh, you'll notice that what I don't do is I don't fold the string here and then roll the yo-yo over the top. What I actually do is I'm moving the string behind my middle finger and then rolling the yo-yo over. And the way that you achieve this in the roll is as the yo-yo is coming towards you, you're just going to bend your middle finger on your opposite hand in a little bit. And you can see that allows the string to pass by it, which sets you up for the bind. Now when you release the yo-yo and it's moving away from you, if you pay attention to my yo-yo hand, you'll notice there's kind of a really small, really subtle punching motion where my yo-yo hand kind of follows the yo-yo forward a little bit and then pulls away. And that is how you achieve the right timing to get the bind down on this particular technique. And what that motion does is it gives the string enough time to pass all the way around the yo-yo so that you don't get a tail in the bind, and it also activates the bind with the pulling motion. And so this is the thing that's really, really tricky to figure out. And again, you've got kind of these three factors. You've got the factor of how fast the yo-yo is moving forward, and then you also have the factor of how far forward you bring your hand and how long it takes you to move your hand forward, and then you have the action where you're pulling your hand back. And it's those three things combined that help determine whether or not this bind is going to work or whether it's going to bind cleanly. So a lot of times when people start with this bind, they attempt it and the yo-yo just doesn't bind. The yo-yo just keeps moving forward, forward, forward. Um, again, you can just try making these adjustments. Try not throwing the yo-yo forward quite as quickly and see if that is the adjustment that you needed. Try uh, moving your yo-yo hand forward just a little bit more and then pulling back, or try moving it forward a little bit less and pulling back, just like a really quick punch and see if that works. And eventually, again, this is just one of those things, it, you just have to really drill it. You just have to keep doing it. You have to believe, but keep at it because I think that you're going to find that these become some of your favorites too. Now, don't forget, uh, practice with the yo-yo spinning kind of slowly at first and do the motion a little bit slower. And then as you get better and better, you can speed things up until you can do this bind at any speed. 
which really puts kind of the cherry on top of a perfect trick. So those are my two favorite binds.